the depths of my soul, I cry to you in times of need and doubt and fear, sorrow and loneliness, pain and powerlessness. There in the depths of my despair, marked by my sin and shortcomings, you hear my voice and attend to my cries. You meet me with forgiveness and steadfast love. Even in the depths, I can wait in confidence, trusting that you are journeying with me from darkness to light, for with you is transformation and redemption. My soul waits for you, and in your word, I hope. Amen. Please stand to hear the gospel of our Lord. The gospel today is also the sermon text that comes from Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and the tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear fellow sinners and fellow redeemed, grace, peace, and mercy be yours from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who gives life to the dead and who calls things that are not as though they were. Amen. One morning Max decided that he was going to jog to work at the hospital that he worked at in New York City. New York City, as you know, is packed with people. So as Max made his way to work, he jogged past dozens and dozens of people that he didn't even give a second thought to, people that he hardly noticed other than to, to move over so that he could run along past them. And so he went until he got almost all the way to the hospital. And finally, he ran past one woman and having seen her and having processed in his mind what he had just seen, he couldn't help but stop, turn around, backtrack his last few steps, and approach the woman. How long has your foot been like that, he said. See, this was a homeless woman, and she had only one shoe on. Her other foot that was bare, it was easy enough to tell why, painful, brutal-looking infection must have made it impossible to put on a sock or a shoe. How long has your foot been like that, he asked her. Leave me alone, she said. I can help you, he persisted. I, I'm a doctor. I work at the hospital right here across the street. But she still didn't want him to help. So he went across to the hospital. He found some bandages and some antibiotics and brought them back to her. He bandaged up her foot, tended to it, gave her the medicine, assuring her all the while, promising her, this is 100% free. It isn't going to cost you anything. You don't need to worry. Now that she'd been helped, now that she knew what he could do for her, the woman's attitude changed. I have a brother who's sick too, she said. And he doesn't want to go to a hospital either. Would you be able to come and help him? So the doctor went with the woman to, to help her brother as well. As heartwarming as that story may be, I, I hate to break it to you, it's a made-up story. It's not real. Uh, it's from a television show that, that Heather and I watch 
hospital drama called New Amsterdam. Maybe I know some of you have seen it because I could see you smiling and nodding as I started telling the story. But I couldn't help but think of that, that story from that show as I read through another story this week, a very true story about another doctor, the doctor of souls. His name was Jesus. He lived 2,000 years ago, and this is a story that I know you've heard too. But the one that we're looking at today is maybe a little less familiar than other parts of the story of Jesus. A day when he walked along and he crossed paths with someone who, like that woman, probably would have been passed by by most people. People would have looked over and seen her foot and they would have been repulsed by it and disgusted and averted their eyes to not look at it. This was a man not unlike that. He wasn't sick, but he was repulsive and disgusting to the people who walked by because they viewed him as a traitor to their nation. He was a tax collector for the Romans who were currently occupying the nation of Israel. And so as far as the Jews were concerned on the totem pole of moral righteousness, this man Levi, who we heard about in our text from the Gospel of Mark, he was way down at the very, very bottom. As Jesus walked past this man Levi, he, he could have averted his eyes and said, I don't want anything to do with him and just gone right along, but he didn't couldn't help but stop and look over at Levi and, and speak to him. Call out to him. Follow me. And Levi got up. He followed Jesus. More than that, he brought Jesus home with him to his house where they joined together in dinner and there they were met by still more tax collectors, maybe friends or co-workers of Levi and, and other sinful people who had been following Jesus who came to hear what it was that he had to share with them. As excited as they were to meet with Jesus, that didn't sit all that well with some other people. The religious leaders, the, the teachers of the law, were told, didn't like what Jesus was doing. They, they called some of his disciples to them and, and asked them, why does your master, your teacher, associate with such awful people? Why is he eating with tax collectors and with sinners? When Jesus heard that that was what they were asking, he came to them and he said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. So I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus wasn't repulsed by this man, Levi. He was drawn to him. Here was a man who had an ailment that Jesus could fix. Here was a man who had a burden that Jesus could relieve. A man whose heart was sick with sin, sins that Jesus could announce to him were washed away through him. And this was a gift that Jesus could offer to Levi absolutely for free at no cost to him, because the price was a price that Jesus was willing to pay himself. So, what, if anything, does the story of Dr. Max and the woman, or more importantly, this account of Jesus and Levi, have to do with you and me? I think when we first read through it, if we ask ourselves that question, we might be tempted to think, well, maybe the lesson here is that I ought not pass other people by. I ought not look down on them because of their troubles or consider them to be less than me. I shouldn't judge other people. That isn't the lesson here tonight. What we need to consider, what we want to take home with us this evening is that we are the tax collector, the sinner, who takes advantage of other people at their expense for his or her own advantage. 
you are the beggar man or woman with an infection so awful and terrifying that someone would be afraid even to look at it, much less to think of it. You are a sinner. A sinner whose sins, if you take a moment to think about them, the things that you've thought, that you've said and done over the span of your lifetime, if those sins were all visible for the average passerby to see, you're a person who would be so disgusting and revolting that they would not even want to look at you. And I know that's true for you because it's true for me as well. We are repulsive sinners, rebellious sinners, who have sinned against our God, against our neighbors, against just about everyone we come into contact with. And so it doesn't seem right that there should be anyone who would want to stop and come back to us to love us or to show us care and concern, to help us in our predicament. But that's exactly what our Savior God has done, isn't it? Could he have passed us by and said, I want nothing to do with them. They're gross. They revolt me. He could have. But he didn't. He stopped everything to come to you and help you. He sent his son Jesus into this world, came into this world and lived a human life. He lived for you. He died for you. He suffered hell for you so that you, 100% for free, could be forgiven all of your sins and given the hope of everlasting life in heaven. More than that, he ruled over the events of this world so that throughout centuries and across oceans, his invitation to you to come follow me, come to me, you who are burdened, who are weary with sin, to receive my rest, that that invitation would finally come to you and you could hear it. And he doesn't just call out to you, come and follow me. He dines with you. Just like he went and ate with Levi. He comes to you with this most precious meal. Intimately and personally comes to each and every single one of us sinners and says, take and eat. This is my body. Take and drink. This is my blood. They're given and poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Wretched, despicable sinner like you and me who can rightly sing like we just did, I'm the chief of sinners. Who can rightly bear on our heads or on our hands these ashes that remind us that we are nothing but dust and one day to dust our bodies will return because of our sin. It's to us that Jesus offers his life so that we can live with him. It's remarkable really when, when you think about it and, and maybe you have or maybe you haven't. How much of Jesus' ministry consisted of eating with sinful people? If you read through the four gospel accounts, there are dozens of times where it mentions that Jesus took the time to stop and share a meal with someone. Whether it's a wedding feast like the wedding at Cana, or stopping to go to the home of these tax collectors like Levi and Zacchaeus. Jesus would go and have dinner even with the Pharisees who, who hated him who disliked what he was doing, who were trying to put an end to him. He shared food with the people who followed him, taking time even at points to, to miraculously provide food for crowds of thousands and thousands of people. He ate with his friends and his disciples, people like Mary and Martha, Lazarus, 
people like the twelve apostles whom he gathered together with for the Passover meal that night right before he died? Or those two men on the road to Emmaus the evening after he had risen from death? Jesus did a lot of eating with people. A lot of dining with people and he still does today through this holy meal where he comes to you to, to share this supper with you, to share this communion with you. All those times when Jesus gathered with those people, it wasn't just to eat with them, it was to share something more with them. The same thing that he shares with us here, the message that the Son of Man comes to seek and to save lost sinners like you and me. He ate with them so he'd have an opportunity to share with them the message of forgiveness from sins, to bring to us that forgiveness from our sin. Over the next seven weeks as we go through this season of Lent, we're going to be taking opportunity during our midweek services, our Wednesday services, and then our, our Holy Week services too on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday to look at these different people whom Jesus met on his way to the cross. And one thing that every single one of them has in common is that they were all sinners, like you and me. In addition to that, Jesus took the time to stop and meet with each and every one of them, to eat with many of them. And the time he took with them made a difference in their lives. For many of them, that time with Jesus was the difference for them between everlasting death and everlasting life. And for some of them, that difference then made a difference in other people's lives, too. Remember the woman with the infected foot from the story? She, once she had received that healing, that help from the doctor, she wanted to share it with her brother as well. The same thing's true for Levi. We know Levi, you've heard of him, probably by another name, Matthew. This tax collector who Jesus called became one of his twelve disciples. And after Jesus had died and risen and ascended into heaven, Matthew wrote down everything that he knew about his friend and teacher Jesus, his Lord and his Savior. He wrote it down in the Gospel account that bears his name, the Gospel of Matthew. Just think how many people's lives have been changed by that message that Matthew had to share. What a difference he was able to make with his sharing of that message. What about you? Whose life could you touch by reaching out to them? Whose eternity could you change with God's help by sharing with them the message of your Savior who died on the cross to redeem you from your sins and who you can tell that person died to rescue them as well? During Lent, customary for a lot of people to, to find something in their life that they're going to give up. For a lot of people, it's some kind of food or another that they aren't going to eat throughout Lent. So that sacrificing that thing then helps them to focus on the sacrifice that Christ made for us. But I'm going to ask you to do something a little bit different this year. I'm going to ask you to eat a little bit more. My challenge for you as we go through these coming weeks, is to see how many people you can invite to eat with you. Let's go and eat with some sinful people. And remember from the ashes that we have that we're sinful people too. Whether it's relatives or, or friends, maybe another family from church here that you don't know that well. It could be a coworker or, or a neighbor who you know doesn't have a church. Maybe you want to reach out to some families from our school, invite them over for dinner and get to know them better. If you'd like to do that, I can, I can give you some names of some people to call. Let's eat with some people and get together with them. That's, that's my challenge to you from now until Easter. Let's see how many people we can eat with. And here's why. Because the same thing that was true for Jesus is true for you and me. When we get together with people to share a meal like we just did here before our service, it gives us a great opportunity to get to know them better. But more than that, it gives us an opportunity to share with them that most precious message that every single one of us has. 
The message that we have a Savior who has washed away our sin. And so let's see what a difference we can make by just reaching out to people, inviting them into our homes, and then sharing with them Jesus, or inviting them here, where they can hear even more about it. I'd like to ask if you would say a, a prayer with me. Let's bow our heads and pray to God. Lord Jesus, we come to you on this Ash Wednesday evening, humbled by our sin. There is no reason why you should love us or care for us or even stop to give us a second thought, yet you came into our world to save us so that rescued from our sins, we could join you at the wedding feast of heaven. Chief of sinners though I be, Jesus, you bled and died for me. Bless us as we join in your holy supper this evening and receive there, together with you, your body, your blood, for the forgiveness of our sins as we rejoice that you eat with sinners like us, encourage us to reach out to others and, and share your saving news with them. Make us bold to make a difference in the lives of those around us. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of your Lord and Savior, Jesus, peace which is beyond our understanding, Guard your hearts and minds and keep you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Amen.